for being here. Mm. Beautiful smiling faces. <laughs> mm. There is a question that I was asked this week and the question really is about trust. Can I trust what I'm hearing? Can I trust that it's really the Holy Spirit? And the question was relevant to journaling. where she wrote, uh, you know, when people say that they journal and they hear the Holy Spirit, they're very confident that that's definitely the Holy Spirit that they're hearing, but how can I know? And when I write or listen, it sounds similar to my own voice, but it's kind. It's a kind, gentle voice. How do I know that's the Holy Spirit? And it's a beautiful question. And yeah, this whole journey is about learning to develop trust in the Holy Spirit. And then eventually this awareness of the Holy Spirit, you know, you just merge with it in the end so completely to realizing that all that is all that there is and it's very very familiar that God is our source God is our very being and the Holy Spirit is the extension of that source so the Holy Spirit is our very being the Holy Spirit is our true nature, is our true voice. The Holy Spirit's thoughts are our true thoughts. And at the beginning of the journey, the Holy Spirit or God is maybe unknown and and yet, the more we go into it, and the more we open to it, and the fear gets washed away from hearing it, and feeling it, and being with it consistently, then you realize, of course, of course, it's who I am. It's not some external, separate, different thing. But it's as if we're a channel. I love the prayer of Saint Francis, make me an instrument of your peace. And as we're allowing the, ourselves to become nothing but an instrument for his peace, there is a lot of washing away of debris that's in the channel And so, what comes through the channel can also seem to come through filters at times. And I think of like Helen Shuckman scribing the course as a great example of that. She was given this um, assignment from Jesus to take down this incredible Course, and yet her channel, or um, there was a lot of resistance to hearing Jesus, and and so when she first was writing down a lot of the notes, 
particularly like in the Ur text, a lot of that was her own notes for herself. And, uh, but when it came to the actual course, there was quite a lot of editing support that, that was needed. She needed to go back through that with, with Jesus. And he would say, well, what I said was this, and what you wrote was this. <laughs> and so they would go through and just fine tune where the message from the Holy Spirit was coming through a filter where there was a little bit of resistance or fear or inter personal interpretation of what was being said. So that's the great thing about Jesus is like all well, the Holy Spirit, they'll give you the message and they'll help you edit <laughs> to make sure that you really he heard the message and have the essence of the message. So when we're opening up to hearing and taking down and listening messages from the Holy Spirit, I, I really encourage you to trust. Put your direction of thinking uh, towards trust and having faith because Jesus has total trust in us and total faith that we will hear and receive and follow through on all that we're given. So we need to just keep aligning with that faith and that trust. And at the same time, just staying very, very open. If there's a feeling of doubt or confusion, just staying very open for clarification. When I first started journaling, I would often have a lot of doubt thoughts and sometimes I would scribble out everything I'd written and then I would go back to it the next day and read it and just weep. Oh my God, it was so beautiful. But there is this doubting part of the mind that is scribbling it out sometimes before you can even really hear it. And that's what the ego is, you know, the ego is a doubt thought, it is a doubt about our own identity. And it is, it's like a judging activity of the mind. And so it's always going to be judging that you are not hearing or that the Holy Spirit isn't really there or you're not enlightened enough to hear guidance yet. You're not clear enough yet. You're not happy enough yet. It's like the voice of doubt and it's, it's always going to be shooting the messenger. That's what it does. As a distraction away from the message. Because the message is so pure and everything that comes from love is a miracle. And the ego is very afraid of love and afraid of the truth because it undoes it. And so it's always going to be distracting away by judging the messenger. So, so that's where our mind just constantly needs to be redirected to prayer so that we can keep welcoming the sense of openness and gentleness and not get too locked in even to the words ourselves. So yeah, it's a beautiful question and I think the answer to that question is a lifelong journey of opening and hearing and discerning. It's like 
like an ongoing exploration and welcome. And there's a lesson in the course, God's voice speaks to me all through the day. And when I just think of that line, I see it in capitals with a capital G and a capital V, God's voice. And yet when you think of a voice, you usually think that it means talking and it means words. And sometimes it does take the form of words being spoken, but not always. God's voice is a presence of love. So his voice can be heard in silence. His voice can be heard through symbols of the world, like just listening to the river, you can hear God's voice. So it's good to take the pressure off that we need to hear it so specifically in a certain way because that's when the fear comes up and then the judgment comes with the fear so it's good to take the lid off just take the parameters off everything you can hear God's voice coming through your favorite song. You can hear him in the bees in the garden. <laughs> you can hear him when you're reading A Course in Miracles. That's God's voice that you can hear reading. So we can turn it around, maybe we're hearing God's voice all the time. And it's just occasionally that there's this attack thought, doubt thought, little activity going on, but unfortunately so much attention is paid to that little mosquito of a doubt thought, that that's what's being remembered and amplified as if that's what's going on all the time. 
I think it was Mozart who said my favorite part of the music is was it Mozart or Beethoven? Beethoven. My favorite part of the music is the silence between the notes. So that's what we can pay attention to. The silence between the notes that's right here, right here in our mind.
And the purpose of, of hearing the Holy Spirit's voice or receiving guidance is to know that you're loved. That's the purpose. The purpose is to know that you're not alone. And so the guidance that comes from the Holy Spirit is to is to remind you that you're not alone and then sometimes that guidance has a practical component to it that is in the direction of coming home to God and loosening from what is being held on to out of fear to come back into the full awareness of being at home in God and that's that's the only purpose for it so while it's serving that purpose of being this kind, gentle, but sometimes very clear reminder, this is not your home, come home. <laughs> then that is the Holy Spirit. And it's about staying so open, it's like a state of prayer is what keeps the mind with the Spirit and asking to continually receive that gift of what we call guidance. But the mind often can also just lock onto it, lock onto the words or lock onto what was known or lock onto something and start to create a position or make a position out of it. And you can tell when that happens, there's, there's more of a, a shutdown that's happening rather than remembering what was it like when I first heard this it was like an openness and a receptivity because the mind is always doing that it's like the self is is always wanting to feel safe and so it just continually makes a position for itself it reinforces a self-concept and it will also do this with guidance. Or, you know, now I know where I'm at. Or now I know this is a fact. You know, but the only f true fact is God, and and that is an experience. And so, if you notice your mind start to get rigid and locked in, even around guidance, then that's not the Holy Spirit's purpose for the guidance, and that's just. Bring it again, bring it again over, to give it over to prayer. Because it's a really beautiful thing to come into this experience of I do not know the thing I am, where I'm going, how to look upon myself or the world. No, that is a beautiful state of mind. It is in total trust. Just trusting that everything is going to be provided and everything will be shown and everything will be come very obvious. And that's where this is all leading. So I just feel to open it up and see if anyone has a question or anything on their heart or if there's any part of this you'd like to hear more about. Good morning, everyone. 
I have asked uh, to be, um, you know, spoken to and have it be clear. Because <laughs> I, I feel like I'm working really hard to um, make the money to leave Arizona. Um, and the money part's really great. Uh, um, so last week, it's like I um, had a mistake at the bank, and that was fine. I said thank you and, and paid that, and then um, things that just seemed to be uh, happening. Like I got a parking ticket where I work right downtown, and it was kind of odd. I was like, okay, thank you for that, whatever that was. Um, um, and I keep hanging out with people that don't want to hear what I want to say. And it's like, I keep, instead of just staying at home and listening to you and David and, and Eric and, and I love the, the videos and, and, but I like, oh, think that I can run out and be with these people that have invited me to come out and then I don't know why I'm there. And so I keep vacillating back and forth between. So my point is that it seems like I'm being squoze to put the house on the market. I've really been, Dan keeps asking me, have you got your house on the market yet? <laughs> and I, um, I'm afraid. Um, of that, but I only have three weeks left of my bankruptcy, and so that'll be complete. And so I messaged David this morning and said, "Okay, where, what, what?" And um, it was nice. He said, "Just keep moving forward." And and so last night actually was the grand finale. I think I. Um, instead of staying home and doing Michael's um, program, you know, his um, Unwind Your Mind group, um, I ran off to have coffee with my daughters and was so sick that I couldn't even be with him. I spent the whole time in the bathroom at the coffee house. <laughs> um, but I, I don't really know. So this morning I'm, I'm really feeling a boot in the pants about that I that I I just really might have needed to quit trying like and I was gonna buy firewood and it was like and then the firewood like I, I always buy firewood and like my neighbor came over and said, let's go in and buy firewood. And, and so I thought, okay, well, maybe, you know, maybe I'm just going to be here for the rest of, of the year. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go next year or something. And then there was kind of a sadness in my heart like that. And, and I thought, but, you know, I, I, I have this yearning to have a partner. And then I keep hearing that, well, Jesus is your partner right now. So I, and I'm feeling like I just need to leave. <laughs> so I'm working more at that. <clears throat> so I just had all that to say, Kristen. <laughs> Thank you for being there.
Thank you, Kay. And you can just see from what you're what you're sharing, you can see just how afraid the mind is to be still. To be still and know that I am God. You know, it's like the mind is is going in these directions. And you can tell by the way that you feel, you know, whether it's really God's plan for you. And sometimes it can feel like that. It can the contrast can be really sharp. And I would just say just continue to nurture your heart and just really nurture this deeper listening. moment by moment because it can be so quick where you can just get swept up again and before you know it you're tumbling you know you're tumbling down a hill like a snowball it's like what happened and then it's going so fast that you can't stop it but even if you start to move in a direction I think It's just so, you're so worthy of just stopping and tuning in and listening, pausing. Even when you get in the car and get behind the wheel, that's a great saying. Am I a sober driver or am I under the influence? Because if you're under the influence of the ego, you're going to crash your car. So moment by moment, just being willing to put this first. Really putting the prayer of our heart first. And it's all being used and just trust that everything is being used. You're seeing what you're seeing. And there are many, many steps to take on the journey in this development of trust while the fear of the stillness is being washed away from the mind many many steps it's like slowly being unwound very slowly I heard David describe it one time it's like if you've got a screw that's been screwed right into a wall you don't just grab the hammer and I try to heave it out you end up bringing half the wall with your with your screw it's like you the Holy Spirit's there just very very slowly and gently holding it very straight very still on the right angle takes a lot of care and precision and just slowly slowly one little quarter turn at a time to unwind that screw so that you you you're developing this trust and you're you're not going into panic or having a overwhelming fear come up so even with your house there's no push there's no hurry just keep giving it over in prayer and asking the Holy Spirit to show you the way So I'm with you in the prayer, Kay. Mm -hmm. I love you too.
written question here if you'd like one. Mm -hmm. It says, there seems to be a sense of urgency to change my situation into something more conducive to peace and happiness. I want to wait for the Holy Spirit's guidance so a change would be right and not personal drama. Can you please talk about this? That's from Suzanne Inwood. Okay. It's a great question because as as we all know wherever you go your mind goes with you so just changing the form or changing the relationship or changing the location you find yourself going with you <laughs> wherever you go so it's definitely a mixture of magic and miracles definitely a mixture of forgiveness in the mind and there's sometimes a form component that goes with it and you could call that magic anytime there's a shift in form but it's often really essential actually as the mind is continuing to loosen up from its fixed positions and attachments and associations in the world So it's, it's very, every kind of situation is individualized in that sense. There isn't a cookie cutter approach to what you should do behaviorally. But I would say that um, having practiced forgiveness and of course the first thing with every, every relationship or situation where there is a disturbance of peace then of course inner inquiry is the direction for your mind to do your own inner work to the point where you can get right down to seeing the beliefs that are at play that you're seeing and, you're, and then you can get down to really seeing the identity or the self that wants it in some way and if it just wants to continue to be distracted because it's afraid of the stillness that's a really good thing to see and then that can be given over in prayer to the Holy Spirit before you can relax into the stillness. Or if the victim is being maintained because being stressed, being a victim is more familiar and therefore safer to part of the mind than having no problems at all and being able to be very, very still. So getting down to seeing the identity and being very honest about it. What do I want here? Even in, in a crazy egoic way that you think is totally insane. <laughs> you have to get really honest about these insane wants and desires in the mind to be separate from God. You know, to want something other than the peace of God. Because it's only through seeing them that they can be truly lifted from the mind because if they're still wanted and it's hidden, then it's like a cover being kept over them. They are being held on to. So our part is just our willingness to reveal them to the light. And in the revealing, they can literally be lifted from our mind. So when this kind of work has been done, and you can tell when there's some, some work being done, it's this juice in it. No. There's something, something good about it. Even if there's something that feels, there's emotion, there's hurt, there's sadness, there's fear of loss, whatever the emotions are, fear, you can tell when it feels like there's something in this for me. I can, you can feel a healing quality in your own heart that it's worth your time. You know, you're, you're with Jesus in it. 
it's holy you can feel a holy purpose but when that's been maxed out and it starts to feel like oh, old chewing gum is a good way to describe it you know when you've chewed all the juice out of the chewing gum it's done <laughs> it reaches a point where you, you, you have to take it out so when it reaches that point where you've maximized every aspect of it and you've given your heart over to it so fully but then you're done there's really nothing left for you and through prayer you get the sense there's really nothing left for me then the prayer would be okay what would you have me do is there something practical or a step to take and then just be open to receiving that guidance And taking steps and form or like a practical activity, I really feel in a way that it, it is a form of forgiveness. It's in a way, a, it's a form of forgiveness to take the step. Because as you're taking a step into something new or letting go of something old, they're both steps with your feels like you're taking a step forward or you're willing to let go and take your hands off the wheel. Both of those are, are a way of forgiving because you, you are releasing who you are and what you've been with that situation. So both of those in a sense are, are a backdrop for forgiveness. And then as you're taking that step of letting go or stepping in, then of course there's going to be more healing in the middle of those steps because the fear of who, I, who am I without this will, will come up. That's what's being healed here. But when you know that it's guidance, whatever the step is, because you've prayed and it's, there's no sense of avoidance or resistance, then it's um, very, very helpful because then you can feel the sense of, I can have faith in this, I can trust this, I've not made this decision alone. So I feel that's very important when it comes to sort of making decisions or following guidance. We always want to know that we're not alone in the decisions, otherwise they'll be doubted and then you can end up flip flopping uh, or looking back on the situation and going, oh, uh-oh, I could have done it differently. So there's a section in the course called Setting the Goal that's very helpful for this. Keep the mind in the right direction. Thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Mwah.